Welcome to Learn Data with Mark. In this video, we're going to learn about exporting CSV files to the Parquet file format. We're going to be using a CSV file of ATP rankings for the last 50 years. So that contains the rankings of male tennis players. Let's start by having a look at the size of the file. And so we see we've got 270 megabytes, maybe a little bit more. Uh, if we look at the number of rows, we can see there are 12 million records. And then finally, let's have a quick look at what's in there. So you can see we've got the date, we've got the ranking, we've got the player, and then we've got the number of points that they had. So it's not a big file, but it's big enough to do what we're trying to do. Now, the simplest way that we might think to convert this to Parquet format would be to use something like pandas. So we can do pandas, read the CSV file, and then call to Parquet, and it will create a Parquet file for us. So we're now gonna run this with a custom Python Docker image that I've created, and it's got pandas and a few other things installed on there. And we're gonna run it with one gigabyte of RAM and see how it does. And so if we run that, we can see it takes, takes a few seconds, but eventually it does it. And if we then have a look, check that the file's been created, we can see there it is. So it's actually created our Parquet file. So that was good, so it worked fine. What about if we run that with 100 megabytes of memory instead of one gigabyte? So let's run it again. And so you can see this time actually it finishes much quicker. Um, so we're like, oh, okay, that's that's kind of weird. But if we look at the response code, we see we get error code 137. So you're like, okay, <laughs> what exactly does that mean? And if we Google that, we'll find that's actually the Docker code that means the process was terminated due to an out of memory exception. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the problem that we want to solve. So we kind of want to work with CSV files that are bigger than what we can fit in memory. And there are other tools that will allow us to do this quite easily. So the first one we're going to look at is called Polars. Uh, and Polars is a data frames library implemented in Rust using the arrow column format as the memory model. And it has quite a neat uh, function called scan CSV, which means that it's not gonna load the whole thing into memory. So what we can do is we can uh, import Polars, we can call the scan CSV function, and then we can call sync parquet. Again, pass in the name of the file, and we can also then control the compression and the row group size that we're gonna use. Uh, so the, uh, in here, I've just put the, the defaults in. And so if we run that in Docker again with 100 megabytes of memory, and this time we're also gonna call a function called check memory usage, which is effectively just my own little wrapper function around Docker stats. You can kind of see how much memory is used by a Docker container when it's running. So if we run that, we can see it runs along and you can see every couple of seconds it's printing out how much memory is being used. So we can see 69, 74, 75, and eventually it finishes. And so now we can go and have a look at that file. And you can see it's created the file. The size of the file is slightly different to what we saw uh, with pandas and that's because of the, the size kind of depends on what compression you're using, the number of um, rows you're using in a group and, and, and uh, some other factors as well. Uh, okay, so that's Polar. So Polar works pretty well. Let's now have a look at another tool. Uh, so this is one of my favorite recent uh, discoveries. So this is DuckDB, uh, which is an in-process SQL OLAP database management system. With this one, we're gonna use the Python driver or Python li library. Uh, for DuckDB. Now what I found when I was using this one is that to make sure that it stayed within those memory limits, I needed to explicitly say set memory limit equals. So in this case, set memory limit equals 100 megabytes. And then we can run a SQL query to do that conversion. So we say uh, copy and then the query. So select star from the, the CSV file. Tell it where you want to put it to. So I want to put it to this location. And then again, we can control like the, some parameters with respect to what the Parquet file is going to look like. So we say, okay, it's going to be format Parquet. We're going to use the, the default snappy codec. And then it, again, we'll say the row group side is going to be 100,000. And so let's run that. And again, we can see it prints out like how much memory it's being used. So it goes right up to the limit. So 82, then 97, then 98, and then sort of 99. And then it goes and sort of goes back down again. And again, we can have a look at the file that's been created. So this one is a bit bigger again, right? So there's obviously some difference between what we used in Polars and what we did in, in DuckDB. And now let's finally check that those, those Parquet files have actually got all the records that we expect them to have. So we're gonna use the DuckDB CLI to explore the files. Uh, so let's open it up. And now let's just write a query. First of all, let's have a look at the pandas file. So we can see it's got the 12.4 million rows. Polars, again, it's got all the rows. And then finally, duck, the DuckDB file has also got all the rows. Uh, and so that's the end of this video. We've learned how to deal with uh, bigger than memory CSV files and how to get them into Parquet format. If you found the video useful, don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you have any ideas for new things that I should cover, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.